Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the show. Tuesday night, July 7th, I believe it is. And um, our special guest tonight is only 16 years old from the Durham region area. Calista Wilson is with us. Yay! Look at that. Yeah, we got crowds. No social distancing. They're, they sounded very close together, Mark, those guys. They sounded really close. So, yeah, so our guest tonight is this lung lady right here. So she is back in the green room right now, getting ready to come on the show. But first, we felt it was very, very important to start off with the national anthem. And who better to sing the national anthem? Then Calista herself. So, ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the Canadian anthem. Raptors. Wow, that was incredible. <laughs> you know, you hear about people singing the anthem and you hear about people having trouble with it too, but man, she killed that. That was amazing. We would have played the American one, but we're going to stick to the Canada. Canadian. The, the American one, guys, go find it on YouTube because it's amazing. It's just fantastic. We're going to talk a lot um, about what's Calista's has done, um, I'm going to say in the past, she's only 16 years old, but she's done a lot in her <laughs> few years um, doing music. She uh, is with the band Girl Power. Um, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about her Juno nomination. And we'll talk about all the other things she's won. Um, and it goes on and on and on. Good job. We got an hour. So before we get to our actual group with all the guys coming out here, we're going to get into the news. The news this week is a little bit different than normal because I had to get some things off my chest this week. So let's get started. Durham region is the area I live in. And this is not weird news. This is sensible news today. Face masks made mandatory in the Durham region area. Folks, we need to wear face masks. This week, my social media, my Facebook page lit up as I posted a few times um, about the importance of wearing a mask and believe it or not, I can't believe all the crazies that came out of the woodwork. Guys, I have a mask on right now. You might not know it, but I do. Look, people, this is how easy it is to cover up when you go into a store. How hard is that? You go into the store, you come out. Oh, I'm out now. Well, if you think that is a violation of your rights, you've got some serious, serious issues issues there's no applause (laughs) but sorry but (laughs) not everybody has a mask so just cover up you could you could wear your dinosaur suit if you have a dinosaur suit around put it on you're covering up and remember the dinosaurs didn't wear masks and that's why they're no longer around anymore the other (laughs) thing is you got to remember getting a brazilian is not going to prevent you from getting the coronavirus either. Brazilian's prime minister has tested positive for COVID-19 after months of dismaying the seriousness of the virus. This guy was going around saying, ah, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Well, now he has it. So welcome to the club, buddy. And in Australia, after 
opening up after having their first, uh, I guess they opened up after their second wave. I guess you call it a wave. They've had to completely lock down again because tons and tons of people are getting sick. This is a serious issue. Very, very serious. But we have our issues in Toronto too. Like I was mentioning, there's actually a group called MAD, M-A-D. Not to be mistaken with MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. This is Mothers Against Distancing. Mothers do not want to distance their kids from other kids. There's like 5,000 members the last time I checked, and that's when all the trouble started this week. Oh, that's good. That's <laughs> good. That's good. So in Toronto, we have other issues. We have this little gentleman here. He wants to do hugs over masks. This is what we're dealing with, folks. People, please wake up. This guy is an attention seeker. That's all he wants, and he's putting everybody at risk. But lastly, you've got to remember, folks, wearing a mask is a great idea. We have all kinds. We have, for those Canadian guys, if you're feeling a little blue, <laughs> when we go to our Black Lives Matter protest, because that's very, very important. But if you're one of those girls that likes to starve themselves and work out, we have one for you too. So you can wear this one. So we got lots of masks. So please, but there's one mask that's not going to save you. This one. It hasn't, saved, it hasn't saved anything since 1967. Don't wear it. It's not going to help you. Uh, uh, see, another one got in. Another droplet through the, through the posts. It happens once in a while. God, can you remember sports? I don't know. But ladies and gentlemen, that's the wacky news. Well, it is, it is kind of wacky news, but it's serious, people. We got we to gotta, we gotta be serious about this. We got to protect ourselves, especially, well, everybody we got to protect. So ladies and gentlemen, I am going to open the doors, let everybody in for the green room. There we have it. Where's the applause? Where's the applause? I got to get the applause. Hey, the applause. everybody. <laughs> My applause isn't as big as yours, Mark. <laughs> My crowd, crowd probably because my crowd is social distancing. That's the difference. So, Calista, welcome to the show. Um, I don't know if you're going to be better off after this for spending an hour with us, but anyways, it's going to be an education for you. Anyway, something you can tell your something you can tell your grandkids. When I was yeah. younger, I spent time with guys that are probably well. I'm old enough to be a grandfather. I don't think the other two guys are. But welcome well, to our show. Technically, but well, yeah, you could probably make it work. Yeah, yes. yeah. So <laughs> welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. But before we get started, before we dive into the history of Callista at the age of 16, we're going we're gonna to have Mark do this week. This week in music. All right. Time for this week. <laughs> is that on the charts yet, that song, Mark? Is that, is that made it to the charts yet? It hasn't charted yet, uh, but... Uh, Maybe he's big in Germany, though, right? I'm hope. Oh, okay. he's big in <laughs> Germany. He's taking over Hasselhoff for sure. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. Master now, people. okay, let's. We got a lot to do today, so let's start it off quickly here. In 1956, we had Elvis Presley recorded. You ain't nothing but a dog. We all know that one. Looks like a dance show now. 56. Uh, <laughs> take number 31 was the version they used. They kept that and released it. That single sold over 10 million copies globally and has become the best-selling song and topped the chart for 11 weeks, a record that stood for 36 years. Not bad, Elvis. Calista, you didn't think this was going to be homeschooling in music, did you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 10 years later, on the top of the charts. Strangers in the night exchanging glances another classic frank sinatra had the number one single strangers in the night i gotta interrupt one time you know that yeah. you, you know that have you guys seen the facebook videos where they play songs for kids and they ask them the what time, they think yes. of it, this, it? have you yeah, seen yes. that calista this is what this looks like right now. This is what it looks like right <laughs> now. No, I, I <laughs> You're like listening like to this song. These songs are even you before do. my time. So. <laughs> it's, just that, it's just that we're really old. <laughs> uh, let's see. 1971. Oh, this is kind of sad. Uh, James Dougl Douglas Morrison, better known as? Jim. Jim Morrison. Yes, Jim Morrison of The Doors. He was found dead in a bathtub in Paris, France. Oh. Cause of death was given as a heart attack, although no autopsy was ever performed, so the certain cause of death may never be known. So, let's see what else we got. 1973, 
famous band Queen released their debut single, Keep Yourself Alive, from their first album. And the song didn't even make the charts. Believe it or not, it did not chart. Uh, Billboard's Top 200? Nope. Mm -mm, didn't do it. Now, Callista, this one's for you. July 2nd, 1979. Sony introduced the Walkman. Do you know what a Walkman is? It's, uh, it's, like a, it's kind of like an old school MP3. Kind there of you go. There you go. Yes. That's pretty good. First, CD player, was it? The it? first portable audio cassette player. Oh, was it you cassette? Audio cassette. <laughs> yes, oh. cassette player. Wow. And yeah, over the next 30 years, they went over to sell over 385 million Walkmans in cassette, CD, and mini disc format. That's pretty incredible. And they were the leaders in the market until 2001 when Apple's iPod hit the market. And that took over everything. Okay, let's move on. 1980, on July 7th, Led Zeppelin played their last ever concert with drummer John Bonham in West Berlin. At the end of a European tour, Bonham died later in September 1980. God, this and we is don't a morbid talk about night. How he died because it's disgusting. Say that again. This is morbid tonight. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> We've had <laughs> here. This is a good one. 1983. 1983. A New Jersey-based band called Johnny Electric signed to Mercury Records. Does anybody know uh, Johnny Electric? Bon Jovi. You got it. Very. That's a good one. Tim. I didn't know that. At the last minute, they right before they signed, they decided on the name Bon Jovi, and the group had since sold over 130 million records worldwide, performed more than 2,600 concerts in over 50 countries for more than 34 million fans. July 7, 1984. Let's see here. Uh, we have the number one song and the number one album. Who remembers that one? Obviously, very well. Does not remember that one. <laughs> uh, Bruce Springsteen, Born in the USA album. I have my copy right here. Is it here? Can you see it? Can you see it? Yep. Uh, great album, great tour. I actually got to see that tour. Um, this was one of three albums that produced seven top ten singles. Wow. Seven top ten singles from one record. The only other records to do that were Michael Jackson's Thriller and Sister Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation 1814. That was a big album for Bruce. Now, in 2005, to put pressure on political leaders ahead of the G8 summit to tackle poverty in, poverty in Africa, concerts in 10 cities, including London, Philadelphia, Paris, Berlin, Johannesburg, Rome, and Moscow, played to hundreds of thousands of people. A TV audience of several hundred million watched the gigs. In London, Pink Floyd would reunite with former member Roger Waters, playing live together for the first time in 24 years. And only three days after the show, it was reported that sales of the album Echoes, the best of Pink Floyd, had risen by 1,343% just from that show. That is incredible. Play live music. That's what you yep. got to do. Yep. I remember watching it, you know, like it was yesterday. Uh, David Gilmore insisted that the money earned from soaring album sales after the Live 8 concerts should be donated to charity, saying this is money that should be used to save lives. Now good, good on that him. concert I think he's got enough money, so that concert that was that was the uh, one where do you know who played in both both Philadelphia and London at the same? Mm. Do you know you talking about, what artist? Uh, Elton John. No, Phil no, Col no, Phil that Collins. Was, that was the other concert. Phil, Phil Collins, Collins right, played right. at both. Uh, he got on the Concord the con yeah, and right. flew that's over right. after playing in England. Flew to mm -hmm. Philadelphia to play in that concert. That is correct. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I'll be right back. <laughs> Stay tuned. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, in 2006. Oh, today in 2006. Wait, is that today? Today the 7th? Today not, is the 7th. It's not 2006, though. No, but in 2006, on this day, uh, Pink Floyd founding member Sid Barrett died of complications from diabetes at the age of 60. The singer, songwriter, guitarist uh, was active as a rock musician for only seven years before he went into seclusion. He started Pink Floyd in 1965 but left three years later after only one album. And I have that album right here. It's the Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Can you see that? Can you see that? Calista, Mark lives in a record store. Uh, <laughs> yes, I do. I do. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's see. Barrett also released two solo albums before going into self-imposed seclusion lasting more than 30 years. Uh, his mental health 
uh, had deteriorated so badly that he ended up spending the rest of his days in his mother's basement. And his mental deterioration was blamed on heavy drug use. So let this be a lesson to you all out there. Don't do drugs. I think he's, I think he's telling you, Calista, because he knows yeah, I don't. That's, I, that's right. No. That's right. Don't do drugs. I'm too old to talk to you like that. You don't want to end up like Sid. Okay, let's see here. You know what? This is very morbid here because the next one I'm reading, <laughs> July 2009. Poor Calista. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. The week after Michael Jackson's death, the singer dominated the top 10 Billboard's album chart, leading the pack was number ones, followed by Essentials by Michael Jackson at number two. Thriller was at number three. Off the Wall was number four. The Jackson 5's Ultimate Collection was number five. Bad was number six. Dangerous was number seven. Greatest Hits was number, I guess, number eight. eight. I'm going to go with eight. Uh, yeah, let's. Yeah, I can count. And <laughs> Michael Jackson's Ultimate Collection was at number nine. That's insane. Uh, isn't that crazy? Collectively, Jackson's solo album sold over 450,000 copies for that one week after his death. Wow. The week before his death, his title sold a combination of 10,000 units. Wow. So, uh, I don't want to say this, Callista, but I think you might do way better after you die. I don't know. It's horrible <laughs> to say, but if you want to follow him. Well, Jackson. only if you got a record out. <laughs> Actually, we have a CD out. Oh, so I guess okay. I, I guess my That's kids it. my kids are waiting for the big moment because we didn't sell we didn't even sell ten thousand copies so they're hoping they're hoping dude we still sell ten you might have ten thousand in the closet still right uh, I'll be on my deathbed and the kids will be like hey didn't dad do a CD once <laughs> <laughs> let's but okay let's there. so what's your favorite Michael Jackson song it's a tough Who are you one asking? everybody well. I'm, uh, I'm going to have to go with, here, I have the Thriller album here. So Thriller, Thriller? Um, You're going to say Beat I'm It? I'm going to have to go with, with Beat It. Beat It? The thriller. Oh, I like yep. Beat It because I, I love the Eddie Van Halen guitar Halen. solo, of course. Oh. It's tough. What do you say, Glista? What are you going to go There's with? There's so many. I'm going to go with, before you go, I go with uh, Can't Stop Till I Get Enough. Oh, that's Ooh. a good one. Too. That yeah. Off the Wall album is amazing, and I listened to the vinyl the other night. But yeah. Yeah, it's hard. It is hard. There are so many. So you can, I don't think I could choose just one, but I'll Glistus, pick beat I it. Don't, yeah, it's hard. You say beat it? No, beat it's not <laughs> my favorite. Beat it. Tim, you got one? Man in the Mirror is a great yes. song. That, yeah, that is a great song, too. That is a great song, too. Actually, did okay. I just watch something on Man in the Mirror the other day? They were talking about There's another song he did. Um, yeah, big song. Glistus, nothing beats you got one, Weird Glistus, Al's. Do you got one? Of, uh, eat it. Does, it, does uh, Calista yeah. have one? You got a favorite? Uh, I have like two. I can't like choose between the two. Um, Man in the Mirror. That's mm, one. Yeah. And then uh, PYT. Mm. Oh, PYT. Pretty young. Pretty young thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's my Michael Jackson. These guys. Right these guys have a Michael Jackson cover band. Can't you tell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I told you not to tell anybody about that. <laughs> All right. Let's okay. Wrap up we these. have one more here. And this is going to lead into a new segment that we are doing. Now, last week we had, what did we have last week? Um, we had Stairway to Heaven versus Taurus. That whole lawsuit thing did Led Zeppelin rip off spirit, blah, 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 blah. This week we have a new one. And we're going to start a new segment. And it's called... You be the judge. You be the judge. Tonight <laughs> we have, <laughs> and this happened this week, um, Avril Lavigne. Facing legal action by members of 70s rock band the Rubinos. Anybody remember them? Well, we no. might in a okay. minute when we hear the song. Okay, <laughs> so here we go. Let's see here. Let me see if I can bring it up here. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now, we all know. Calista knows it. Yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, 1979, there was a song called I Want to Be Your Boyfriend by the Rubinos. Let's have oh, a listen. Oh, I, I have heard this. Okay, you be the judge. Oh, man. What do you guys think? Guilty or not guilty. I'm not going to give out any answers as to if, whether it went to court or not. I don't really care. But you guys be the judge. You decide. I don't know. It sounds pretty close to me. It's pretty but close. 
But what I don't understand about these things is there's so many people involved in producing Avril Lavigne's record. They're yeah. all record. Like there's a lot of people involved that know a lot about music. For sure. Yeah. Could they all be blind to hearing that? Like I've, I wondered the same thing, the same thing, because it, 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 the course of both of those songs are so similar. Wow. That it for it never to come up or anybody to remember it. I, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I, I don't know, I guess. Yeah, the fact that it's kind of the same lyrics too, right? Yes. Like it's yes, the same. Exactly. It's different if it's the music and you're like, well, I don't know. I can't tell. But when it's like, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, cool. now Callista's so afraid to write a song. <laughs> <laughs> what have we done to this poor girl? Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh. oh. I, I have to say that in, in, in writing music and stuff, it does happen by coincidence. Yeah, for Complete sure. Yeah, I just like Coldplay and Satch, right? Coincidence. Uh, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, that's going to be on maybe next week or the week after. But I actually have a song that I wrote. I did a demo back in the 90s. And I, you know what? This will be – I'll do this as part of the segment on the show one week. And it years later, um, I listened to it. I, I pulled out the tapes and I listened to it and I went, my God, that is a song – that I am performing with my current band. It was Honey Badger, Tim. We were doing um, uh, eight six seven five three zero nine, and the the riff that I had written for the song that I did was exactly the friggin' same. <laughs> it was exactly the same. And the guy and in the song just... was Kenny, not Jenny. <laughs> Kenny, yeah, Kenny with my lover. Oh, and poor Calista. We just we just put my Calista through a terrible history know. lesson of dead <laughs> rock and rollers, rip people ripping people off. There's but only I, so many progressions and notes yeah. you can well, do. Right? So. I, I did not do it on purpose. It would just. Was, but you could, I, you know. could, you could easily hear something because if you understand how the brain works, if you hear something one day way back and it sticks in your mm -hmm. brain but gets put aside, right, right. and then yeah. you've recalled it, it's kind of your mm -hmm. brain malfunctions. And if you understand how deja vu works, deja mm -hmm. vu is basically a miss, a miss, uh, firing of memory, right, with stuff that's happening today. So. You've got recollection of where it was, remembering mm -hmm. it, and it actually happening again. So that can happen. So, yeah. But try to prove that in a court of law. Yeah. Well, yeah. Calista, so, Calista yeah. won't have to worry. She'll have so much money. She can just say, you know what? Here's a couple of million dollars. Take that. Leave me alone. Everything's going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. So there we are. There we you go. You be the judge. You be the judge. All right. So now, Calista, you can bring us all back up to happy times. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize that everything was so so uh, morbid. So, so where do we start? Where do we start? I mean, hmm. Well, let's start 16 years ago. 16 years ago, <laughs> maybe maybe not that far back. Okay. So so when did when did when did, you you must were you a music family? Was it a mu music family you're in? Uh, no, my parents and my grandparents they never like played instruments or sang. I mean. My grandma would like sing me lullabies, and my mom would sing me lullabies when I was going to sleep. But no, I don't know. So don't it know was it think. was all you then. You just you just have a have a want for it, a talent. No, my what? mom says that when she was little, she wanted to be in um, like a kids band or something, and so she would pray every day that she could sing, and then this. So you maybe you got all that. You got it all. You got it all. Went to the wrong person. She didn't say me. <laughs> Skips a generation she, she, usually. She, she, she didn't mention the name. That's it. You get it. That's it. Now she can sit back. Well, your mom is a massive fan, a massive supporter. I remember going to take photos of you. You were playing in Whitby at a park concert. And here comes your mom carrying all the speakers, carrying all the stuff. Like it was... Roadie. It was awesome. Like I could just tell like it was all about doing great the sound check you guys did the sound check and that's a lot of um hey there's your mom here now <laughs> <laughs> i think that's a sh that's either hey how are you doing or, or hey, 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 hey what are you, hey, what are you talking about <laughs> oh hey, hey oh. yeah that's funny but no it is it is and i've seen that following you and i i met you at mike's on fire you were first year there singing contest, so you'd have been, you might have been 15. You would have been 15 or just, or would you have been 14, 15? Close. You'd have turned 15. Yeah, something. Yeah, so see, let's, let's put it this way. It was last year. 
And yeah. <laughs> so, so I was doing the photos and I actually was double booked that day. I had to run out and do another photo shoot somewhere else for a family. And I went and did that and I missed one singer, but it wasn't you. And I came back and then you were going to go up on the stage and you went up there and I hadn't heard you sing. So I don't, I don't know. And I've done this for, I think I started in 2015 doing the photos. So I'm there and you get up and the first song, did you do uh, Dolly Parton's um, I'll always love you first. Uh, I can't remember, but I think I, no, I think I did that one second. Oh, did you do that second? <laughs> I can't even remember what you did first. So, anyways, I'm here holding the camera. And I try to explain this to people. When you've got a camera with a really zoom lens on it, your face is like right in front of me. You're singing, and I'm listening to the music. And I was getting emotional from. Oh, you did the Etta James song first. There you go. I I'm reading the comments, but I can make out I just remembered that. But it was your mom who mentioned that. But yeah, Etta James. So I'm like completely blown away by this. And I said, I went, I sat down after, and you were sitting in the front row, and I sat down with my camera, and I said, you're going to win. You're going to win this. And you're like, you think? I said, oh, yeah, guaranteed. And you won. It was that great. It was, it was just a landslide. So uh, that's the first time I heard you sing. And uh, then I became an instant fan. So I said, oh, we better go. We better go to Instagram. We better go to Facebook. We better this. This kid's going to make it. And then a year later, I'm watching you and then you get nominated with the band you're in. I guess it is. I guess it is a band. Is it a band? Do they call it a band or a group? Uh, I we think call we call it a band. A but band. Some, like sometimes you call it like a group. Like a music but group. yeah, girl power. So guys, go check this out. And girls, go check. Girls, obviously girls, go check it out. <laughs> girl <laughs> power. <laughs> but you got to take the E out and put a little dash there. But girl power. And. Man, I, I, I've listened to some of the songs, and the message is amazing. Like, you guys, like, how long have you been doing Girl Power? Um, I first got in. I was, I'm one of the original members, so three years now. Three Just, years? Yeah. Wow. So I started okay. when I was in grade 7, and now I'm in grade 10, and I'm going into grade 11. Yeah. Oh, so how did, that, how did it come about, that, that the group? Like, uh, did you just say, hey, I want to do a group, or was it? friends or you know did you it was so my manager uh through mm -hmm. canyon entertainment she said to one of her uh friends i want to make a girl group mm -hmm. and i want to make it about not just singing and dancing but i also want to make it about like um social causes and um being like advocates for mm -hmm. rights and stuff so basically i got an audition and it was first online there was two online rounds and so the online rounds were just post a video of you introducing yourself and sing a song and talk about yourself a bit. And then we got called in to a um, live audition where first we sang all by ourselves and we sang Girls Just Want to Have Fun, which became our nice. like staple <laughs> song yes. uh, for like years and years. And then we sang one of our own songs that we wanted to sing. So I sang I'll... Um, Rise Up by Andrew Day mm. and then we got in gr two groups and we had to basically make up choreography and make harmonies for Girls Just Wanna Have Fun and okay. I was wow. not good at harmonies <laughs> or dancing at that time so <laughs> I was so surprised I got in. <laughs> nice. Well, uh, that's, I, that's, that's a I, cool story. Yeah, you know how you get in? You know how you got in? Because you have the ability like to light up a room you have the energy you like you just like when you sang that day like it was just you you lit the place up and i think artists that artists that do really well have to you have to have that you have to have a presence on that stage mm -hmm. and there's a gentleman named jason flom he's a music uh, he has lava records and he also does have you ever listened to his podcasts, you guys? I was talking about it this week because I had a gentleman on my other um, podcast who was uh, in jail for 23 years in the U.S. for something he didn't commit. And people, Jason Flom has spent 20 years getting these wrongfully committed people out of prison. And he is responsible for signing Lord and Katy Perry and yeah, he discovered them. And if you listen to his story, someone sent him a video one day. Lord had just uploaded. She was from New Zealand, I believe. She just uploaded a video on YouTube. It barely had any hits. And someone sent it to him and said, check this out. And I think she was singing uh, Royals in the video. It was just like something they loaded up onto YouTube. 
sent it to him, and he did everything in his power to get hold of her and signed her right there on the spot. That's how nice. he... And, and now that's not like an old rock and roll day story. That's just recently. And who's the other band? You guys will know. Uh, Greta... What's Greta that? Von Fleet. Yeah, he signed them as well. But um, he Have said... Have you sent them the Northern Storm CD? I, I should talk to him. <laughs> I'll just Sorry. put all my money and put my money on Calista and send her stuff to him. Yes. But but what, but what I'm trying to say is he says you can tell a rock star just by looking at them. Mm-hmm. They don't even have it's to. He said you don't even have to sing. You can just tell. And mm-hmm. even you on the screen right now, you've got that energy. And mm-hmm. yeah, you do. You got it. And she it's just now presence. you. Now you just got to do all the work. You got to work hard. But <laughs> you got your family behind you, and that's why that's why we wanted you here because we wanted other people to to see what somebody at the age of sixteen can achieve already. And we haven't even got to the Juno nominee yet, but like it's incredible that you just keep pushing forward. Like you said, you 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 even will admit to not being good at harmonies and all that. And you know what? You may may not have been, but you kept at it and. They kept you. Yeah. So where do we where do we go from here? There's so much to talk about. So you, so I, go I, girl power. You want to? Mark got a question. Well, no, I was just gonna say um, last week. You know, I was I was listening to some of your stuff and I was checking some stuff out, and I have to say I was blown away by your voice too. I mean, yeah. the the presence and and as soon as I heard you sing, I just thought to myself, wow, what a voice. I mean, that is the, the it, she's only sixteen. I'm like, holy crap! I mean, you know, she's going places, and I was, I was blown away. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Work on those harmonies. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, I, I, I think I have I'm sure she has. Oh, I'm sure you have. Oh, I'm. Yeah. But I, I, and that's what that's like being like a gymnast too. When you discover or any sport, and music's a lot like sport. Once you discover that you have the capability to do something then you really have to work hard to just get that mm-hmm. little bit higher, right? Like if you just yep. want to, like one thing, you know, you get good enough where you can sing and some people do it naturally and you're probably a natural singer, but then you, then you just want to take it like a little bit higher and a little bit better. And it's like so much work to get there. And that's mm-hmm. where you have to put in the, the hard work and, and just don't ever give up. Just keep at it. Yeah. Unless you really, but you understand. also play instruments as well, correct? Yeah, I yeah. taught myself how to play instruments. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. She does it all. Yeah. Unbelievable. And I, I think she's gonna play for us tonight too. I think. Yeah. Are oh, yeah? Do you want you want to play so. you want to play so. want to play something now? Do you wanna or whenever sure. you're ready? Whenever you're ready. Sure. Look at the yeah, confidence. No we, can, we can do it now. And you know no. what? Oh, yeah. And, and and we'll do harmonies. Because oh, you're no you're no good at harmonies, so we'll do the harmonies. We got you. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Well, we're gonna we're gonna switch your screen over, Calista. So let's let's do that. So we're gonna give okay. you the whole screen. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> you're the star. Okay. Okay. Make sure it's in, all in tune. I don't wanna mess up. It doesn't okay. have to be in tune for this show. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I will be singing uh, "Zombie" by the Cranberries because. Um, nice. I would usually be doing a lot of like rib fest shows during the uh, summer, mm. and so I always sing this song because I love this song so much. Uh, but since I'm not on stage, well, let's pretend it's rib fest and let's let's hear it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Perfect. Okay.
crowd i think Big i think our here. show has the Big best our show has the best fans. streaming fans for sure oh, yeah. but yeah, also the, the best performers every week too but the best that that was great and <laughs> you know what fantastic. i i'm gonna be honest with you i would never if i i would never expect you to have picked a cranberry song because that they're going back quite a bit mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> so yeah so well it's not really that far back but <laughs> But so so this kind of lead, this could be a segue though we haven't even got to the Juno yet but we're gonna get to it but that this could be a segue to activism because that song I I'm not a hundred percent sure what the song's about but for me back to 1916 it sounds like they're talking about the war the guns World War One I. I don't know if they're talking about men in general just the want to fight and all that but I mean you're probably attracted to those kind of songs are you are you are you attracted yeah. to that because of the stories. Yeah, I don't, yeah. And, and so, so what's the song that I don't know the title, uh, but you do in Girl Power? That's about um, not wanting to be somebody else, just being yourself. What? Um, a lot of our songs are, but uh, yeah. But uh, I just, I, I think I played I think, it in in the uh, promo. I had it there when you guys were singing, but I, I really uh, dug the let words. Go, it's like it's never let go. That's one of our originals. Is that never original? So, so how do you guys write then? How do you, how, do you guys write them or do you have people write the songs? Um, so basically our producer, he makes us a track and uh, he's super good. He can get it done like super fast. If he hears something like in his head, he'll just make it and then he'll send it to us and gives us a bit of like a guide melody. And then we uh, go into our dance studio and we take post-it notes and we write different themes on them. And then right. we put them up on like the dance mirrors, and then um, we s- pick which ones will go together. So if I say I don't want to let go of who I am, and then like my friend says uh, I want to be myself, uh, you just put them together. <laughs> are you read- and, are you reading the oh, screen? That's cool. no. I gotta mess you and up then, there. But... And then yeah, and then we just start writing lyrics off. That's of awesome. So you guys write all the lyrics. See, I I didn't know the process because you hear about these bands that <laughs> form like this. But the thing is, you guys have a lot of control about what the band does. Yeah. Then. That's awesome. That's that, fantastic. That is that awesome. That is incredible yeah. because yeah, now you get good. to develop. Because it, mm-hmm. it's easy, like, let's say, for example, Mark and Tim and I decided, oh, we're going to get a guy band together. There goes my light. It, we're going to get a guy. <laughs> we're going to get a guy band together. But you can you can write the music for them. You tell them what to do. Like a lot of those bands, that's what happened. They were and, put together. They were. They were put together, and they were given all the stuff. The people played all the instruments. They did everything for them. They didn't even write. But you guys are developing yourself, which is an amazing situation to be in. So that's for me, that's amazing to hear. Yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. That's fantastic, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're all about like uh, trying to make ourselves better performers uh, and just in the industry in general. So we will have like... Um, in the beginning a lot, we choreographed our own dances and we wrote our own songs, obviously. We learned how to play instruments. Um, now we have like choreographers and uh, uh, what are they called? Uh, vocal teachers. Yeah. And, but uh, Harmonies. In the beginning, we like, yeah. <laughs> Harmony coach. 
<laughs> I'm going yeah. to boogie every time I see you now. <laughs> but nice. it is, it's just absolutely amazing to hear that. That's great. Because the, it, lyri- the, lyrics also- were, the lyrics were incredible. That's why I brought it up. The, it, the music was good and great and fantastic, but the lyrics were like, well, man, this is good stuff. So good for you and, guys. And, and- you get a lot of individuality coming out of it too. I mean, you know, some of you and some of everybody else. And, and I think that's great. It's not just, you know, somebody in sort of in the background just saying, do this. Say that. You know, so it, it, it's great. And it's coming from your generation as well, which I think is also great, which is something that's will live on forever. Right. And it's, it's a PCU and it's a, you know, it's, I think that's fantastic. Thank you. But yeah. not only that, the great. thing is you have to work with, how many is there five five total in the or is there a larger group it's larger group um so right now um the first album is six is the six like original girls right and some of those girls they have gone like on their own paths or Mm -hmm. they've gone off to like university and so uh there is now 11 girls in the group um and we're working and but yeah, there's in in that those songs in that album, this is us. There are six of us. Wow! Oh, cool. So okay. you have to learn to get along with each other. <laughs> like there's got to no seriously bands like oh yeah for sure. We were in I was in a yeah. band with these guys upstairs here, and I'm telling you, like you 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 have to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, just say it. Go ahead. I feel and like we always, on. like, got, like, along really quick. Like, that's why we wrote, like, one of our songs, Friends Click, because we were just, like, really, like, mm. close, like, to begin with. And I feel like mm. we don't really fight over things because it's, like, or, like, argue or anything over things. It's just, I don't know. I feel like this is, like... Maybe that's a credit. Good. Maybe that's a credit to the people that put the, help put the band together, too. They, mm-hmm. they use their... I was their, just going to say the same smart. thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't... Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Look, looking for for personalities that are going to work together and not, you know, clash and yeah. kind of gel and yeah, that that's always a bonus. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you you've got so so you got some brothers and sisters, yeah. so you <laughs> you got a you got a little gang gang of Wilsons over there, so yes. that probably helps you get along with people. Definitely. Uh, I have eight siblings. So wow! Wow! Uh, yeah. Holy cow! I, I we know, should we should get your mom on the show. Your mom yeah. should be on the show. <laughs> there would be some stories. I <laughs> no, but it is. It, it, it's it's amazing that because uh, I see what you do. I see what your family does too. Because I know your mom too, and and all only only know your mom and yourselves because of that day we I heard you sing and you know you become friends and stuff. And yeah, I see what you guys do. The other day you wrote you were out uh, Canada. You were berry picking. Am I right? Yes. See, um, do my homework. We go to um, strawberry fields and like whatever farm is open, um, and we go pick strawberries. That's awesome! Yeah. Just awesome. Nice strawberries for everybody. Then your mom has. <laughs> then your mom has to come home and make strawberry cake or something. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this Juno. Let's talk about this Juno nominee, no, or nomination, because that, that's quite a um, a feat in itself. Oh, yeah. So how did that? Um, how did that? Well, I guess tell us. Tell us a story. Okay, so um, so we got invited to this um, press conference, which was on TV, and only like a couple people were like invited to it, um, like a couple bands and artists and stuff. Um, so we it's, we're at this um, thing and we're invited, and they were like, okay, we're gonna say the nominees now, uh, and for children's album of the year. Yeah, Children's Devil of the Year, um, we hear our name pop up and it's on like this big screen. And we we were just, we were screaming, we were going like crazy because this is like our first like Juno nomination. And it was just, <laughs> we didn't think it was it would happen. On top of that, we met Alessia Cara and um, uh, a bunch of other like super popular Canadian artists. And we um, then... For the Junos, like when it actually came to about to start, we went out to Saskatchewan, um, but then it was, you know, canceled. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you say the place was really? Saskatoon? Is it Saskatoon? Saskatoon, but we call it Saskatoon. 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 I like how you just said our first 
nominated. Yes. Mm-hmm. Our, this Did was you our get first. that? Not like we got a not. We oh, we're so excited we got nominated. We no, we got nominated for our first one. Because the first. second one will be coming up real soon. That was awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Speaking, speaking of Canadian music, now I I have a list here, and I want to say, um, over Canada Day, uh, a radio station from Toronto played. I don't know how they picked it, but they played the top 100 Canadian songs of all time. How they chose them, I have no idea. And I want to say they're going to do this again maybe in, I don't know, however many years. And I can guarantee you, you're going to be on this list There you go. Guarantee. There's a guarantee. Are you pointing There's to me? Guarantee. Who you have, you, oh, you're, oh going, you're pointing to Calista. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> no, you will. It was your first Juno nominee, <laughs> your last. Thank you. And I just want to say here that number six on the list here is Tim's favorite song of all time, uh, Taking Care of Business. <laughs> <laughs> that is like number Turner six on the drive. Oh, that's not us. Oh. Yeah, number six. I made the top ten. It was recorded in New York City, I think. Uh, yeah. And it, rounding out the top three, we had American Woman by the Guess Who? Lista? No. Yes. No. Uh, number Lenny two Kravitz. Is Lenny Cajun. Kravitz did it. Lenny Kravitz did sure. it. That was. Lenny well, Kravitz that was still way before but, your time, Lenny Kravitz. Yeah, that was. Uh, <laughs> and the number one Canadian song of all time. Any guesses? What was number two? Uh, Bob Cajun, Tragically Hip. Mm. Any guesses on number one? Number Can one know, song of all time, Canadian song of all time. Canadian song of all time. Uh, Heart of Gold. Brian Adams or Celine Dion? Mm, Tim's on the right path. Oh, Titanic? Except... No. <laughs> please, <laughs> please tell me no. Oh, no, Brian too. Adams, Summer of 69. Summer of 69? What a terrible list of songs. <laughs> well, that's that's it. Like, who picked this? <laughs> I have no idea. There that's are just, songs they're just like beer drinking, beer drinking song. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't, I honestly that's like don't. Doc Rock. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, th- this list ranges from everything from you know the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald by Gordon Lightfoot to uh, you know Bare Naked Ladies. If I had a million dollars, I mean, it's all over the place. So I don't know, man. Oh man, but, but Calista gotta, Wilson will be on this. list I think it's time we had some new Canadians up on the top of the list. <laughs> I, Northern Storm didn't make the list. I was very very surprised. Well, I didn't send my, I didn't send the songs in. Oh, you beat, you missed the deadline. So, yeah. so you you had no idea that you were gonna get nominated for this Juno. They just put you in a room. Yeah. Uh, well, our publicist said you're invited to this thing, and for the Juno. Oh, and so they knew. This, this they thing. knew. The publicist like, okay. must have known. The publicist must have been in on it because they wanted you yeah. just to get surprised. That's <laughs> awesome, though, that they did that. And and you thought it was just kind of a cool thing to do, just to be yeah. a part of, and then all of a sudden, bang, your name is up there, and yeah, I was so I we so that must have been like, surreal. Oh, you're going to like this thing for the Junos? I thought it was just like some party or something, mm-hmm. that, like one of those things that we like go to, like to meet new people yeah. and stuff. But mm-hmm. yeah, it turned out to be that's very cool. cool. That's did you very did cool. you sleep that night? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah, because it, yeah, you can't even imagine. Be- yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember my first Juno nomination. I I dream about it every night. <laughs> <laughs> Juno. There's a there was there was a glass tiger. There, I shouldn't even say the story. Maybe there was a glass story. There was a glass glass tiger story where one of the m- members in the band, I guess, had had some trouble and put his. Uh, Juno in a pawn shop, and someone saw it there, and someone bought it oh, and sold it back. I to know that, yes, I've heard this story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, don't ever do that. <laughs> oh, we got a question. We got a question. Oh, we got a question. Was it a song or an album nomination? It was an album uh, nomination, children's album of the year. I, right. you know, that was mentioned. I don't think Kelly's paying attention. She's not listening. Well, she's probably <laughs> starstruck. <laughs> like could be <laughs> but but she, she's got mark how could she be yeah, starstruck so but the thing is um <laughs> there's your answer right there there we go we got it look sharon's on top of things Children's album of the year. <laughs> awesome yeah. it's your grandma it's awesome. we got the whole family here <laughs> we could uh, we could it on a big zoom thing we did, but um so so what's interesting so it's pop but it was for children so that sends a nice that's a nice thing because you're um, 
I don't know how to say this, but I guess if you're, because it is a pop song. Like it, to me, it sounded like pop. Yeah, but it was definitely the fact that it was put in the children's category is really sweet too, because it reaches that younger audience who become. Yeah. Um, but it's inspiring. You know? Yeah, and now yeah. now you're role models. So all of a sudden yeah. you're 16 years old and you're having to grow up and deal with what 16 year olds. And I had a house full of 16 year olds. We had four kids and we might as well add Eddie because six, four is like eight. And, <laughs> but, but after a while, I just lose track. But our, our kids were all one year apart. So we had yeah. like at one point they were 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh, yeah. boy. And when my wife got out of the mental, mental institution. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> <laughs> then you had to go pick the kids up but, from uh, wherever you drive. But no, but uh, it's tough. But now you've got all this added pressure on because you are now you've got all these kids looking up to you, and, and they are really in awe about what you're doing. And so, with all all right, because you're you're an amazing role model. But do you find it an added pressure, uh, or you just do it yeah, naturally? I, she does I, now. I do feel a bit of pressure, now I brought but up. it's. You know, it's like but, I'm just going with the. Phone. But it's easy for you because you're. I think you're a natural. You're a natural. Um, I wouldn't want to say in, influencer is not the right word either. But you're, you're. It's natural for you to be the person you are. So it's not like you got to get up and do this. You got to come on with us and talk and say, "Oh, I better be the Callista that's yeah. in girl power yeah. because I got to put on that face." No, it's naturally you. Right, yeah. Right. <laughs> Where do you fit in, Callista, with your siblings? Are you like the eldest? Young? I'm the middle. I'm right before the middle child. So my sister, who's a year younger than me, we're like best friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's the middle child, and she um, always thinks that she gets like special privileges for being the middle child. So <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like middle. So okay. so hey, we didn't do trivia. We got oh, any trivia? Do we have? Do we have time for trivia? Well, we got we got we time have, for trivia. And we got if, a bit of time. And it, sure. Calista, do you want to do another song or not? Or is it in your contract? You don't have to. No. <laughs> no, you don't have. Play a song. Play some the trivia. Show, there's no, there's I, no I think rules. people would much rather. I think people would okay. much rather listen to her. So, than, uh, and then you then you don't have to answer Tim's questions, which might be really tough. <laughs> so, if you want to do another song, you're more than welcome to do another song because it's your show. Okay. And plus, um, plus, plus, your grandmother's watching. So I don't know, <laughs> but you don't have to do a song. I don't want to force you. Uh, it... I mean, I could, I could do a song if you want. Sure. That'd be great. Then you're doing, okay. a, then you're doing a song because we really want another song. Okay. All right. Let's do a song. All right. Uh, let's do it. Take. Well, when you're ready, let's... it's all yours. And w- should we do, should we do the harmonies again, guys? Because I think last time yes. was really good. I noticed <laughs> we the numbers. Nailed it. People people continue to watch afterwards. <laughs> okay. Ladies um, and gentlemen, our guest tonight, Calista. I don't know. Okay. Um, I'm going to do another song that I do usually on my uh, Rip Fest tours. Um, and it's Creep by Radiohead. I'll play this again. Your, before you start, your grandmother said, uh, "Sing my favorite." Is that is that it? I would. Um, no. Is that oh, yeah. <laughs> no? Radiohead isn't your grandma's favorite. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> uh, um, she her favorite is uh, "I Will Always Love You," but uh. No, not tonight. I, yeah, that, oh, no, no, you got to be ready for that. I'm amazed you're just pulling this yeah. one off the top of your head. I'm sorry, grandma. <laughs> okay. Let me just. Okay. Okay, wait. One, two, like two seconds. Gosh. Ah. Uh, okay. Well, while we're at, well, while we're waiting, um, hope everyone's day's going great. I hope everyone's feeling positive. Hope everyone's happy. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's get started. <laughs> When you're here before, I can look you in the eye, just like an angel. Your skin makes me cry. You float like a feather.
wish I were special But I'm a creep I'm a weirdo What the hell am I doing here? I don't belong here I don't care if it hurts I want a perfect body. I want a perfect soul. I want you to know this. I'm not around. You're so very special. That was Fantastic. good. Fantastic. Yeah. That was for Grandma. There's that Grandma's <laughs> tearing up. Beautiful. <laughs> we got lots of great, lots of good comments. Well, uh, you know what? We probably could have got to so many other things. I mean, we could have talked more about you singing the anthem of the Raptors game. Not a big deal, is right. it? Is that a big deal? Is that a, is that a, big, is that a big deal? I mean, yeah, something people do all the time. But again, <laughs> like the Raptors, I mean, we're talking about the team that won the championship, and you're mm -hmm. that must have been just the craziest buzz doing that. Yeah, crazy. It was so like surreal. I didn't, I didn't feel like I was there until I was done, and I was like shaking. Well, I could tell because at the end of O Canada, you you were like, "I'm so glad this is over." But it was the most amazing <laughs> thing. Like I would be like, but the thing is, it was flawless. Like I'm telling people, go back and. Go dig it up because, uh, yeah, go check it out. Go go Google, uh, YouTube it, uh, watch it because there's not a, there's not there's not one hesitation. There's no one flaw. And doing something like that, you hear people all the time. It's it's a tough gig. You got sound. You got the crowd singing. It must be just crazy. There's no control in a sense. Yeah, um, I've been singing the anthem for OHL teams like the Peter right. Peterborough Peets and Oshawa Generals, and so um, I feel like I have to like pretend that they're not there, and like it's almost like I'm covering my ears, but I'm not. Like I'm like right. doing it mentally, sort of. <laughs> um, and so I have to like keep time. I'm I usually I either hold the mic like this so I can tap it, or like tap or like tap my finger against my finger so I can keep time, or uh, on my leg. Yeah. Which anthem do you find more difficult to sing, O Canada or the Star Spangled Banner? Um, since I've done O Canada so much, I feel like it's easier, and it doesn't have yeah. too many jumps it's in it. Like the right. Star yeah. Banner. Uh, so yeah, probably the Star Spangled Banner is a bit more difficult. And which one do you like better? I'm putting you on the <laughs> spot right now. <laughs> 
Um, I'm Canadian, so oh, Canada. <laughs> All right, good answer. But I, I think the Star Spangled Banner, though, for song wise, has got a little bit more to it, though. There's like yeah, yeah. I've heard that's tougher for singers. Oh sing my that. god, yeah. More range, sure. yeah. yeah. I couldn't even yeah. ima- I couldn't even re- I wouldn't even be able to remember the words even under that kind of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> like just just to remember the words and not make that mistake on uh, at a place where there's so many people watching you all of a sudden and mm. you know fans mm. are so critical like that yeah, they're just not pull a Roseanne fan. bar. Yeah, I just go out there and trash it. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, that night. <laughs> so so yeah, so you're 16 years old you or 15 when you did that. And then you do that, like, geez, where do you go from there? You've just you just sang the the anthem for well, maybe you could do it game seven next year. Yeah. When they win. <laughs> yeah. But no, that's that's <laughs> tremendous. So we, yeah, there's so much more we can talk about. So we're gonna save all that for the uh, when you actually have the Juno, so you can bring it and show everyone. Yes. And, uh, but we'll definitely. definitely we'll definitely stay in touch and uh, keep in track. So everybody, go to YouTube, go to Calista Wilson's uh, Instagram, go to Facebook, the website, go to Girl Power as well. That's Girl Pow Dash R, but it, you say Girl Power. Go check it out. Go like all this stuff because it is truly amazing. If you have young kids that are in bed, let them check. Go this. wake them up. <laughs> <laughs> go wake them up and get them out here right now. But no, please, please uh, introduce them to uh, Calista and her music and and the band or the group. And is there anything else you'd like to finish off with, Calista? Is there anything else? Any messages with the activism background? Is there anything you want to say before we uh, go? I just want to say um, I hope everyone's staying safe and is wearing masks and is social distancing and is keeping in touch uh, virtually with all of their friends. Um, and I hope everybody has a safe and good night. Awesome. Thank Perfect. you so much. Perfect. From all of us, Mark, Tim, and Calista, we wish everyone well. Remember, for those in the Durham region area, you're going to be wearing your mask whether you like it or not, or you can stay at home <laughs> and you can shop on Amazon. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night.